Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokis Mystery. This will be part I think, 308, <clears throat> and we're continuing with our lesson titled Way Station Earth, part 6. Before we enter into this lesson, I want to make a statement. The Bible is written to be understood from God's perspective, not man's perspective. If people choose to try to see it continuously from a human perspective, they're not going to understand the principles that are being laid out. The Bible is designed to be read, to be instructed, instructing the participant who is instructed by the Holy Spirit, not his own intellect. Hmm. And in that respect, anybody trying to enter in in another way is not going to receive what the scripture is intending the individual to understand. So what do we do? We put our mind on the Holy Spirit as he's, as you're going through the lesson? Well, it's written for the born again saint who already has the Holy Spirit and as the word is pursued the Holy Spirit automatically if the individual is open to receive it gives him understanding the problem is most people don't allow the Holy Spirit to give them the understanding they try to instinctively rationalize and make it make sense from a human logical perspective and that's undermining the purpose of the spirit in the individual's life. The spirit is a guide to prepare us and give us an understanding of things that the mind can't comprehend. Examples, as we read this lesson, we will, we're going to understand that God is not to be understood as a person. He's to be understood as a reality personified. The earth is not to be understood as a planet. <clears throat> it's to be understood as a matrix, a system of realities operating together. Otherwise, <clears throat> the individual is not going to comprehend the totality of what's being rendered in Scripture. Having said that, let's enter into the lesson. Scripture indicates at the gathering the Prototokos teachers who have been given rulership over all the goods, the possessions of Christ will have access to all the things of Christ whether they are in the heavens or in the lower parts of the earth matrix. They constitute a protected reality. The gathering is a process of bringing these realities in unity, connecting them, the things in heaven, the things in the earth matrix that are in Christ, not in the Luciferian orbit. We're going to see some examples of Turn Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. This is where turning. Mm -hmm. Should we understand that the other parts of the matrix, which are not the physical earth, are all spiritual, or some spiritual and some physical? What's the makeup? <clears throat> it's a matrix, okay. a system of different, differing realities. All right. All are going to be connected at the gathering. But the question is, are those elements which are connected, the many that you're referring to, mm -hmm. are they all spiritual or are some physical and some spiritual? They are physical and spiritual. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and spiritual. Now, verse... You, sa you, you, you sound unhappy about giving me that question, that answer. No, <laughs> no. How does it... Uh, co uh, how does it work together uh, cohesively? It works together for the saint that participates in the gathering. <clears throat> this is what we're going to read here. This is the principle, verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, 
he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. What is this saying? This is saying that you have things in Christ which are on the earth matrix that are physical and spiritual. You have things in the heavens in Christ that are physical and spiritual. The gathering is going to connect them all together so that they become a unity never again to be separated. Once they're connected together, should we understand that parts of the earth matrix are connected to the heavens? Yes. yes. So this is not a separation of what we're calling the physical earth and all those other other dimensions make up the matrix. Everything comes together. Everything in Christ. Remember, this is a time when the fourth empire is going to be dominating the whole creation. <clears throat> those things that have been preserved in Christ are going to be connected together, separated from the Luciferian influence and the Luciferian uh, um, uh, agenda, if you will. It's going to be a protected reality. Who would be in Christ and also be in the matrix elements? You're going to see that. That's what okay. this lesson is. Oh, oh, okay. Patience, okay. I get it. <laughs> Again, that's why I preface this with a, <clears throat> to un try to understand it from God's perspective. Yes. As you might have heard once or twice, Typically, when I pray the opening prayer, I, I ask the Father to open our, our minds, our hearts, our ears, and our spirits. Amen. Meaning, open every opportunity to receive from you in any fashion, any way we can possibly imagine, to, because of His Word being so diverse and so <coughs> multiplicity, I want every access, any, every opportunity of each one of us to be open to receive. And so it's literally verifying that I've been doing that since who knows how long but that's exactly what I'm doing what I think we are all supposed to have <coughs> ready for God's word when it comes in every but every aspect has to be open to do that you got to put yourself in the receivable position yes okay <coughs> which brings us to the next principle scripture indicates within the earth's lower regions are vast regions watered and flourishing. These <coughs> regions are the refuge, refuge, okay. refugees for the faithful rulers who did not side with Lucifer in his rebellion against God. They constitute protected realities. Turn to Ezekiel 31, verse 16. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden the choice and the best of Lebanon all that drink water shall be comforted in the neither parts of the earth <clears throat> so he's talking about when Lucifer revolted there was an element, a group, that did not side with him, that remained loyal to God. Well, everybody was cast down to the neither regions, both good and evil. But God put a separation and sent those that had been uh, 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 faithful to him to regions where they could be comforted, paradise regions. They're still down there. They're still waiting. At the gathering, they are going to be connected with the regions on earth and the regions in the heaven that are Christ's okay. separated from the fourth empire okay. and all that other stuff. 
you understand that the paradise regions that you're referring to for those who drink water and shall be comforted are a number of matrix dimensions under the umbrella of the word paradise. Is that, is that how we should look yes. at it? Okay. Yes. Both spiritual and, and physical. physical. Right. Right. I was um, attempting to explain to Georgia the earth, spiritual earth, and physical earth. And I just wanted to confirm, I, I told her something which I want to double check with you, if that's okay. Sure. The heavens and the earth, and the earth and the heavens, Genesis 2 <coughs> and 4 is what we're talking about. The first part of the verse refers to the spiritual heavens and earth. The second part of the verse, after the creation comma, is the physical yes. heavens and earth. Okay. Yes. The new earth, at the point that it goes, in, no, before it goes into eternity, is that in the primary or the secondary? Primary. Ah. It's eternal. Okay, so then I missed, sorry George, I misspoke. You were right. Yes, sir. In my mind, I'm seeing the, the physical, and I'm understanding it as temporal. Is there any regions of the physical that are eternal? Oh, no. Hmm. no. So we're understanding that anything eternal is in the primary? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. <coughs> Let's continue. <coughs> is it at the bottom of the primary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would have to be, wouldn't it? Yes. Below y or, or the YHVH region of the primary? Yes. Okay. Now, what we find, Scripture indicates the ruler, in other words, the faithful servant that comes into his inheritance at the gathering, who is <coughs> going to become the prototokis <coughs> teacher. teacher. Okay. Scripture indicates the ruler over all the Lord's goods in addition to instructing the church communities, Revelation 7 churches, will also be instructing the faithful choice and best of Lebanon in the doctrines of the kingdom, so that by the time of the rapture, they will observe and understand with their angel teachers events taking place around God's throne. In other words, the teacher, when Jesus says, I make him ruler over all my goods, he's talking about everything that has been preserved, that's been faithful to him throughout the secondary creation. <clears throat> Lucifer has not been allowed to corrupt anything or anybody that's been faithful to him. God wouldn't allow that. He'll preserve them, just like he does in the human race. doesn't change. They're going to be brought into the end of the age situation. Currently, they are ignorant, like everybody else, of God's master plan. The only ones that know that are the prototokers, because they're the only ones that have been designated to be inheritors of his master plan. Yes. And you just said that God protects those from being corrupted. Mm -hmm. But we do know that some will be corrupted by their own choice is what well, I'm saying. Well, we're talking about the human race will be corrupted, but these won't. They've been faithful all this time. They're going to be faithful till the end. So these are nations. Yeah, they're not human. Right, right. They are from the Luciferian era. They're eternal beings that have been loyal to the Lord. Now, what you've just described so far is the Protodicus teachers instructing, we understand that part. Okay. Is it true that the elders will rule over these? Yes. Okay. Yes. Will the people of the saints have the same level as these? Higher, lower, how? Um, no, they'll be over because they come into the new covenant. 
the people whose sins will be over them. Yes. Because these come out of the old covenant, yes. is what you're saying. Well, they don't have any covenant because they're not human. Agreed, but they come out of the old but testament. But that era, yeah, yes. And the people of the saints end up in the lower heavens. Yes. That's including the Old Testament saints? Uh, well, the Old Testament saints are going to be beneath the people of the saints because they never come under the new covenant promises. But since these came out of the secondary heavens, is that correct? No. Oh, they came out of the primary heavens? <coughs> yeah, they're, they're eternal beings. But how can they come out of the primary heavens if the primary cannot be corrupted? Because when, when they came down to the secondary, they were open to be corrupted. Lucifer wasn't corrupted until he came down to the secondary and got, came in contact with the darkness element. Okay. And it corrupted him. It corrupted those around him. But these stood firm. Will they continue to live in the secondary um, environment? Because uh, I, I don't understand how they can live in the primary environment. Well, remember, the secondary becomes eternal. So then After the, all this passes away, everything is going to be eternal. <coughs> so the secondary, only at the point of the great white throne, I guess, becomes eternal. Yes. So then the new earth can be in the secondary. But the new earth is eternal. It's considered part of the primary. Okay. We have, the, the difference between the primary and the secondary is temporary and eternality. Mm. The new earth will never go away. Agreed. It's always connected to eternality, which means that after this passes away, it's part of the primary creation, totally. It's never part of the secondary creation. It could never be because it has to be eternal. So when you think of the primary heavens, and then you think of the eternality of the new earth, they're connected because they're all eternal. That's the, okay, so that's the foundation of the connection that you're referring to. Yes. That the secondary creation which becomes eternal, now you could say is part of one the primary. Yes. Yes, that's right. what you see in Revelation okay. 21. Everything now is one unit, gotcha. whether it's heaven or earth, it's okay. all connected. Right. Can you explain for me again what the people of the saints are? The human race <clears throat> that remains faithful to God, but they don't qualify for the adoption. In other words, they don't make the rapture. They don't become total sons of God, but they remain under God's protection because they are loyal to Him. Everybody out of the human race becomes a people of the saints. The saints are the prototokos <coughs> that re receive the fullness of sonship. The people of the saints do not elevate to that level of adoption. But yet and still they get rewards, they get inheritances, they get blessings only on a lower scale to get a position yes but is it not true that an incredibly small fraction of non prototokos make the rapture sure so what do you call them prototokos we just said non prototokos no i said the people of the saints that don't make the adoption okay are there any who make the rapture make the rapture not the fullness of adoption mm. Well, the rapture, is, the rapture is the fullness of God. Who are not protodicus. And that can only be the people of the saints. Is what there is a section of the human race now that hear the fullness. When the gospel goes forth, they're going to hear the fullness. <clears throat> the reason the people of the saints don't make the adoption is because they don't have the information. Okay. Throughout, Remember, we did a whole lesson on yes. this. Throughout... So there's, there's everything the the true gospel was not allowed okay. to go forth therefore they can't qualify because they don't know so a small fraction the do humans that it. do know right. and lay it all down for right. the lord make the rapture what do you call them prototokos they enter into the fullness of sonship you say they become prototokos in other words yes we're talking about the temporally called yes who are who? so loving of god that they okay okay 
at the time of the rapture, they become prototypical. Right. Prior to that, nobody right. is adopted son. Go ahead. Is anybody that is part of the group of the people of the saints called from eternity? No. <clears throat> so the ones we've just described are temporally called prototokos, is what you're saying. Hmm. Temporally called, they become prototokos at the rapture. In other words, if two minutes before the rapture right. takes place, right. they've been going along, along, and suddenly they fall away, they never become prototokos. Gotcha. Okay. Only at the adoption does everybody <clears throat> enter into that fullness of sonship. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Turn to Revelation, fifth chapter, verse eleven to thirteen. Here we're going to see the connection between the Prototokus teachers and those of what I call the protected realities, those that they are going to teach in addition to the elders. It's illustrated in this passage of Scripture. Revelation 5, verses 11 to 13, And I beheld, and I heard, I heard, the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. So he hears the voice of the angels who are in the temple. You can't see them, but you can hear what's being said. Around the throne is only the elders and the four living creatures who are prostrate, praising God. Praising. After they finish, you hear the voice of the angels coming from the temple, and the voice surrounds the throne and the elders. And John records what he hears. <clears throat> I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What is a hundred million basically. Saying, so he's, say, he's recording what the voice is saying. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. This <coughs> is the groups that are in the former protected realities that got connected <coughs> at the gathering. They all came under the authority of the angel group who taught them. They are now aware of events taking place okay. around the throne because they have been connected. connected right. And there are many, many of these realities. Yes. Which make up the matrix. Yes. Okay. Yes. All under the angelic uh, authority, influence. That's why when the angels begin to proclaim and praise God, all these, this creation joins okay. them. Gotcha. And that's the Prototokos taking care of those people that have brought them to the place where they are. Are, are they people? There are, yes, there are people, there are also other myriads of intelligences, right. physical and That's spiritual. Right. Right. We'll talk about eternally. God is a prolific God. He creates in multiplicity. <laughs> I have to ask a ridiculous question. No problem. Go ahead. He doesn't talk much about this group, but go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> the physical ones that she's talking about, who are looking at the spiritual ones that she's talking about, is it like they're looking at ghosts? No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. 
What do they look like that's to each a, other? That's a human. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you, it's ridiculous. Uh, can, can, These can, are eternal <laughs> beings. Yes. yes. Well, the, can they sense? <coughs> is that what are they doing? Is sensing their presence? No. They look like a physical being. <clears throat> look at it this way. Can you see water? Yes. Okay. Can you... <clears throat> okay. Can you see solid material? Yes. Yes. Okay, if you have a glass of water here, and you have a rock here, can you see them both? Yeah, absolutely. Is it the same substance? No. I see. Okay. I rest my case. Okay. It's no problem for them like it would be here, because here you don't have the senses to detect in, in, in its totality the things of existence. To them, that's no problem. Yes, it just came through me. Now, Josie, this is not the average teaching. Average people <laughs> will fight about this. Yes. So you have to have non-average people hear it yes. Yes. to believe it. Because the average person doesn't have the Holy Spirit to give him an understanding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he's trying to make it sound, make sense through his intellect. That's why I said at the beginning of this lesson, yeah. you can't go that route and expect to receive anything from the Word. But I have the Holy Spirit, and I'm still struggling. To it makes perfect sense, though. It makes perfect sense, though. The Father is entrusting us with things that have never been discussed sure. or talked about. Sure. We it's are exactly chosen. It. Sure. Yes. But let's go on. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Scripture indicates all that Christ has gathered and connected in heaven and earth will witness the events taking place in the tribulation period. Why? Because the Prototokos teachers have prepared them for events that constitute the Father's master plan. Revelation 5, we want verses 1 to 3. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to look was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. What is this saying? This is saying, this is... Go back to Ephesians, the first chapter. Verse 10. When I first met you, Mr. Jones, what we're about to read right now is a scripture that went to my mind over and over and over and over in 19, since 1991. Mm -hmm. In the dispensation of the fullness of time, this scripture mm -hmm. is like the Father had me paying attention to that scripture, so now you're going to teach me about it. <laughs> Again. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. And those are the word things. It means <laughs> intelligences. <laughs> things, yes. Not humans, but things. <clears throat> in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay. When the connection is made, you get Revelation 5th chapter 1, 2, 3. Okay. They are going to be instructed about the things that are going to take place constituting the end of the age scenario. Now go back to Revelation 5th chapter. Verse 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth. The same description Ephesians 110. They're all connected now with all the intelligences that reside in them. 
are observing, participating in the events at the, around the throne. Hmm. <clears throat> because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. So they are understanding the glory of Christ the opportunity that they've been given and the rewards for them being faithful because the Lord opens the seals and he he enables them to comprehend events to take place they're going to see the glory of the prototokos because it's the prototokos that are directing the events when the Lord opens the seals that will bring uh, the conditions of on earth to pass. Should we understand that the opening of the seals is immediately after the connection is made? Yeah. Uh, when you say the, the opening after the connection verse, is made. Verse 9, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Mm -hmm. Well, the connection is made, we've just read in verse 3. 1 to 3. Well, when you say the connection... Between the heavens and the earth. No, the connection to the heavens and the earth takes place at the gathering. So the opening of the seals is in the tribulation period? Yes. Okay, okay. After the rapture. Okay. Directed by the Prototokos. Yes. So, basically what you're looking at <laughs> is a, the glorious panoramic revelation of what we all now have an opportunity to participate in. These individuals destiny depends upon the steadfastness of the ones who have been called to teach them these things. If we fail, they fail. God will hold us responsible. Believe it for that. They've been faithful since the fall of Lucifer. They're going to be faithful to the very end. We, looking at the opportunity that we have with transcends comprehension, this is mind-boggling. What God has put us in the middle of is this glorious opportunity to develop life forms and intelligences that existed before this world was ever even conceived of. Yes, sir. How many of these beings are unfallen? All of them. <laughs> I know that. I'm trying to shock this man here. That's not going to shock me, trust me. The thing of it is to see, but they're not fallen, so they are eternal. But they don't yet know how to operate in their in the real in, in the reality they're in. We are going to tell them how to operate. Yeah, in exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get us to understand. This is mind boggling. The prototokos sons of God are destined to inherit all things. Is the implication that these species, these intelligences, being superior to humans? aren't as easily affected as humans by the corruption and the bondage. <clears throat> Not at all. Mm. They far surpass humans. That's what I'm saying. In 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 <laughs> resisting I've just said that. yeah, in right. resisting temptation because Lucifer was right there. And they stood firm. So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Okay. In the first place, they resisted Satan. The human race is still trying to resist that and some of us. Race is not even some of us. Yeah, right. okay, you can count them on one hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're got three minutes. We're gonna finish this. Okay. The principle of the protected reality. In other words, God was so pleased with their faithfulness that he put them in what I call a protected reality. Mm -hmm. A spectrum of realities in which they could flourish and exist. <laughs> awaiting the time of the gathering. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the, Lord. Yes, the principle of the protected reality is illustrated in Psalms 91, verse 1. Turn to Psalms 91, verse 1, because the human race could also enter into a protected reality, but since its creation, it's refused, refused to right. do so. Right. 
No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. You got better things to do. There we go. He, he that dwelleth in the secret place, protected reality of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, God puts you in a reality in which, because of your faithfulness, the enemy cannot bring you down. Mm -hmm. Now, each reality is different. It's commensurate with the being <coughs> what has capacity is what's purpose is but he's going to be allowed to live and to exist in freedom now these that were faithful during the time of the Lucifer are in paradise regions in which around them is corruption but they are in a protected right. paradise okay. flourishing mm -hmm. looking at the situation that we're right. developing Another level of nature. Yes. How much more? Can I ask a question? Sure. It doesn't apply to this lesson, but mm -hmm. uh, Chris, and I, Chris and I were discussing it yesterday, and he said I should ask you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's very wise. The rapture. Uh huh. The rapture. Will we leave our bodies laying on the ground and will will be gone, or will our bodies instantly change into a, a heavenly body? Your body will change instantaneously in the twinkling of an eye into the body like Christ's glorious body. Which is, which is fit for them. If you want to see what you're going to look like, turn to Revelation, the first chapter. Verse 13. So there won't be dead bodies laying all over the place. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. No, no, and your clothes clothing. aren't going to be laying all over the place either. <laughs> <Too late>. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to look like this. Revelation, the first chapter, verse 13, down to verse 15. <clears throat> One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, girt about the path with a golden girdle. You're going to have a robe. In the Greek, it's called stole. Shining white. A sash around your middle that goes down to your heels. Your hair is going to be white as snow. <laughs> Mine already is. Even young people? Everybody is going to be the same age. That's young, Georgia. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Jesus died about age 33, so that's about the age that you're going to have gonna be your glorified body. Oh, wow. Right. Your eyes are going to be like fire. Your face is going to be as bright as the sun. And <clears throat> the radiance, the glory that is around you men will not be able to stand in your presence because if they did they'd burn up right but the point was it's not a hu it's no longer a human body no because it has to be fit for the heavens it's a celestial body it's neither male nor female right it's divine okay it's no it's no jew or greek it's a glorified right. body okay. it's a glorified body praise the lord